point in life running for railroad commission, what can you offer? What do you have to offer the, the people of the state of Texas? Hello, everyone. It's a beautiful day here in Dallas. Thank you for coming um, and listening to this. I'm Krista Castaneda. I am running for the Texas Railroad Commission, which has not one thing to do with railroads and everything to do with oil and gas. And that's where I come in. I have over 30 years of experience in and around the oil and gas industry, both as an engineer and as a lawyer. And I have represented people in the industry and against the industry for the last 30 years. Um, I know the perspective of the landowners. I know the perspective of the royalty owners. I know the perspective of the operators. Um, and I know that we can do better at the Texas Railroad Commission, and that's why I am running, because I want to offer my experience and my 30 years of knowledge to serve the people of Texas. Right now, the Texas Railroad Commission race is the most important race in the country for the environment, because nowhere is oil and gas bigger, and nothing has a bigger impact on the environment than uh, oil and gas extraction. Furthermore, we are super challenged right here in Texas. I did a town hall on this just a few days ago, was sold out on the state of the oil industry and the Texas economy and the Texas Railroad Commission can help and should be helping in these desperate times. As a result of all of us attending this meeting virtually rather than driving to a place and getting together, and it was as a result of us not getting on airplanes, we are down 30 or 40% on our demand for oil. Very soon, within weeks, there will be no place to put it. The Texas Railroad Commission can help with this. It has a regulatory function to control supply and demand, and it needs to act now. It needs to have acted yesterday, but now is it's urgent. So we need people in here who know what to do and how to do it, and I am that person. Wow, thank you so much. You know, I, you are absolutely right. Not very many people know exactly what the Railroad Commissioner does. But we do love the fact that, why is that? Give us, let me ask you just a quick, quick question while we wait for the, uh, the next candidate. The gas is way down right now. That's great. We're loving it. However, how long do you think it's going to last? And what is, and why, why is it so low right now? I know the demand is down, but what are you, what are you looking for going forward with the oil and gas, especially the oil prices? That is a great, great question. So we all love it. If gasoline were free at the pump, that'd be awesome because Absolutely it's our right. bottom line in, in um, a very challenging time right now. Um, the, the problem is, is that, and the reason it's so low is because there's such a glut of oil. So um, the cost of that you have to pay to refine it, plus you have to pay to get it out of the ground. Well, nobody's having to pay very much to get it out of the ground because we've got so much of it, um, which means that it, it, literally it costs more to buy a 12 pack of Charmin than it does to buy a barrel of oil right now. The problem is six months from now, after everybody goes down, um, it, you know, the oil companies go down, then what will happen is that the price will rebound to something much, much higher and much, much more uncomfortable for us as consumers. That's why we care. So if, um, if y'all are interested in this issue as a consumer, know that it also greatly impacts your pocketbook as a citizen of Texas because we depend on the oil and gas extraction and the price of, of, of oil deter helps determine this um, for 20% of our state revenues. Our education, our schools, our roads are funded on oil and gas extraction. This matters a lot. Okay. Right, oh, wonderful. I just got a text that our candidate is here and that would be the Honorable Roberto Alonzo. Are you around? Hello. I'm right here. Hello, how are you? I'm doing great, thank you for the invite. Thanks for joining us on this beautiful, beautiful day. I'm gonna give you two minutes Tell us how great you are, and then we're going to come back, and I have some questions for both of you. So give us a sure. little bit of history about why you're running, where you've been, and what you have been doing. Well, uh, the reason I'm running, kind of, uh, it makes me think of uh, one of the movies I recently saw on Netflix that said, uh, uh, the Pope said, you know, we need to think about the environment, just like uh, uh, you know, God said, let's 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 take let's take let's take care of people. 
but uh, I'm very concerned about the environment. I'm very concerned about climate. Why, why am I qualified? I've got 20 years experience as a state legislator, two years on the dark board. I know we're going through a, a, an economic situation. Uh, in the legislature, we had two experiences already before we did that. In 2003, we were down about seven, eight billion. In uh, uh, 2011, we were down 27 billion. So we've been through economic situations or know we're gonna come out of it. So I have the experience, I have the background, and I know how to work with people. I know uh, people around the state. I know, I know. Right now, we're not running against the Republicans. We're running against each other to select a Democratic nominee. This is the first time in many, many years that we had an opportunity to elect a railroad commissioner from the Democratic Party. I want right, to thank you right. for creating that opportunity because if it wasn't for him, you wouldn't have had the onslaught. We would have probably be running, and I'm happy to be running, and I'll be the best candidate for the job. Thank you, Alonzo. You know, I know your name sounds familiar. You were on the dartboard for how many years? Yes, ma'am. Two years, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Two ma years. Oh, my gosh. I got very involved in that. It's been about, what, 20 years ago? When yeah, everything was, was uh, starting? Yes, in 2001, yes. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, the state of Texas, we're going to get this question air on the phone, on the line. I'll say on the line. I'm dating myself. Let's get it. We're on the internet. I'm gonna go back to Costanza. I wanna make sure I'm saying that correctly. Costanza, are you there? Uh, yes, I'm here. And it's, okay. Cas it's, it's Krista Castaneda. Krista, that's what it is. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's Krista, okay. for both of you, with the collapse of all the oil prices worldwide, what is the outlook for Texas oil producers? Now, this question has two parts, both large and small. So let's okay. start on the worldwide stage first, and then I'm going to come down, of course, to the city and the county and the state of Texas. So the question is for both of you, I'm going to give you about 60 seconds. With the collapse of the oil prices worldwide, what is the outlook for Texas? And actually, Krista, you have sort of answered a, a part of that question, but now it has two parts, the large and the small of the outlook for Texas oil producers. Sure. So first, um, you know, we've got a glut worldwide. Within weeks, we are going to have stored all of the excess oil that we can possibly store. And okay. we're going to have to shut in all of the wells that are producing oil. It's dire. Um, and, and the demand for oil is not coming back anytime soon. And so it's imperative that the Railroad Commission act right now. It's imperative that we use the best knowledge about how the oil and gas industry actually works and how the markets work to fix the problem immediately. What does it mean for Dallas and what does it mean for Texas? It means right. we are losing a huge chunk of our state revenues. It means that in the next legislative cycle, we are not going to have enough money for our schools and for our roads. It's a big, big problem. I don't know how long my time is, but. That's my summary of how this matters to us in Texas and how this matters to us in Dallas. And of course, if we're not getting revenues from the state for the things that we depend on here, like funding our road construction here, it's going to impact us in Dallas County as well. We're losing hundreds of thousands of jobs, also an impact that will affect us here in Dallas County. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, Roberto Alonzo, can you give me a 60 second answer, please? Can you ask me the question again, please? Oh, absolutely. With the collapse, with the collapse of all oil prices worldwide, what is the outlook for Texas oil producers, the large Texas oil producers, and the small Texas oil producers? What is the outlook, in your opinion? Well, the outlook is, uh, is the, the bottom line, regardless of how pretty we make it sound, because of the coronavirus, that's what's going on. There's right. not uh, people uh, using cars and not people using gas. It's not that there's a glut. Nobody's using it. So as a result, you got tons and tons of, of oil available. So what's going to happen next? Now, I know there's been a task work to discuss it, and we can say we're the best, but there's tons of people that are very qualified to get us answers. The question is not going to be who's qualified to, to provide the information. What's going to happen is what decisions are we going to make? In this decision that we make, I'm going to come back to the concept. 
We need to take care of the environment. We need to make sure whatever's out there are the pipes uh, uh, in the tank and whatever is going on that we make sure that the people are taken care of. And then as far as, as time comes about, and as uh, today we started the process to open up the economy, there's gonna be more use. Now, uh, let me make a comment quickly about funds. Yes, there are gonna be less Very funds. Okay. Very quickly, because oh, quick. quick. I can't tell you, how, hold on just a second, Alonzo, yeah. I can't tell you how many questions we have coming in. So no, just okay. for the moment, I'm going to do this real that. quick, real quick. Thank you. I know okay. there's going to be a big discussion in the next session about how much money is going to be available for services. And the issue is going to be that there's no funds. I'm going to tell you, being there, there's always money. It's just who gets the money. For example, in the last 10 years, there was a lot of companies that got tax breaks because the economy was doing great. We got to make sure everybody pays their fair share. So what we need for services is available. There's always right. money. It's just who gets the money. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Back to you, Krista. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about balance. How would you balance? How would you balance environmental concerns with the fracking issue? That's a big concern. We'll start with you, Krista. How would you balance? Sure. Environmental fracking, concerns with the fracking issues. Fracking is actually used to refer to three separate problems. The earthquakes that come, the water that gets used and contaminated, and the proximity of human civilization to um, the extraction activities. And all three of those are, are what people call fracking. Now look, we still need for our oil industry to function for some time. We cannot end all of oil extraction for, for the, you know, today and not have huge problems on our hands. But what we can do is we can turn the flared natural gas that's going on, they're burning enough natural gas to power the city of Houston right there at the wellhead. It can be turned into electricity that can be put into the grid and we can power our cities. We can make sure that the environment is cleaned up immediately if we can best enforce the laws against flaring. So that's what we can do right now. And I'm going to stop because I'm at my 60 cents. You're at your 60 seconds. Oh, I appreciate that so much. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm timing myself. There you go. We're, thank you so much. We appreciate that. Alonzo, how do we take a balance here? Yeah, well, as it relates to fracking, during the legislature, we debated this issue, and I voted against fracking. When Denton passed their, their law, their ordinance, to not allow fracking in, in, in Denton, the, you know, the oil and gas companies went to Austin and changed the law. One of the biggest deals is not that it's fracking, but where is the fracking occur? And I want to make sure, and I, I've already stated in my position that I'm against fracking, that, that the people where the, uh, the, the drilling is going to be, have to have a right how it's going to impact in their area. All right. Next question. You're doing a great job, candidates. What concerns do you have about the July, August, September, October, November elections as it relates to the virus issue? What concerns do you have? And I just mentioned the months in between, but if you want to lump it together, that's fine. 60 seconds, please. Starting with you, Krista. What concerns yeah. do you have about the July, August, September, October, November elections with regards to the virus? So I'm very concerned that people are going to be confused about how to vote. You know, we as Democrats <laughs> yes. want a uh, vote by mail. And so we're trying very hard to get it, but it's going to leave a lot of uncertainty um, unless the courts are decisive and speak very soon and very um, permanently about whether we're going to be able to deploy that or not. We also have to balance the health needs of people, especially in the short term for the July runoff, to not stand in those lines at the same time that we need to turn out and keep the enthusiasm up for the democratic base um, and get as many voters to turn out for the, the runoffs as possible. So it's a big balancing act. We still don't know enough. We still need better testing. We still right. need better tracing. Um, and we're just going to have to see how it evolves. Uh, Alonzo, we're talking about the election rolling down to the main election, the national election, with all of these issues that we have in between. Yeah, let me, make it real, let me make it real easy, and I won't use my 60 seconds. 
Okay. We just saw what happened in in, in uh, Wisconsin and those areas where the lines were long and, and the, uh, the health issues. We already know there's a health issue. We already know. So make it easy. I'm for mail ballots. Let's get the show on the road. I know there's going to be issues, but we've already had mail in ballots. This has been done around the country. I support the council of mail in ballots. Let's let's get it on. Ah, let's get it on. Uh, let me change the title a little bit. Fundraising. Running a statewide race, a statewide race requires an awful lot of money. How's your fundraising going? Krista. So I'm closing in on $100,000. Um, I'm very excited to get to that point. I have raised more than any Democrat running for railroad commissioner in recent uh, memory. Um, so I'm really putting out a full court press to bring in the money to be competitive. Because remember this, the incumbent Republican lost his election. There is nobody in the office that's going to be there in January. So the, the millions of dollars that have been given to Ryan Sitton, who lost, aren't going to go on the Republican side unless they shift them all to Jim Wright, which is possible. But Ooh. we don't have an incumbent. So if I can raise the money to be competitive against the Republican funding, in November, I'm very excited about it. I have the best chance of doing this because I'm about to hit six figures. So if anybody wants to help me, I've been posting on how you can help. <laughs> Lonzo, how's the race going? And uh, how, much money have, how much money have you raised? Let me tell you, the race is going fine. And part of what we're dealing is raising money, but more important is support. I knew that going into this election, the big story was going to be the presidential, and then we were going to be the next in line. There was millions and millions of dollars spent to get out the vote. Then the folks had to decide who they wanted to vote next, as we all know. And I'm happy to be in the runoff, and I'm happy to get the support of uh, the other folks that, did it, uh, that didn't make the runoff. And I'll tell you this, as far as fundraising, I got endorsed by 240,000 union members. 240,000 union members across the state that are going door to door in a bunch of elections. So all that effort is, is, is thousands and thousands of dollars of support. In addition, I have tons of volunteers that have the credentials and the skills for Facebook, for email, for all the work that has to be done. So my fundraising is great and I know it's gonna continue to get better and I'll tell you, we're gonna win. All right, all right. You guys are really, really good. Looks like we're gonna have a great, great <laughs> election in November. And uh, we look forward to following you all the way through. Let me go back a little bit. Let's go back to the oil industry because I know you're gonna get so many questions about small producers, large producers. Will, what do you think, give me your opinion, will the small producers be consumed by the large guys? What, what, in your opinion, are the small producers going to do? We start back, we go back to Chris there, 60 seconds. Because we have these big, big, big kahunas around the state of Texas. So I don't think that necessarily the small producers are going to be overwhelmed by the big producers. What really matters is what condition these companies were in before this all started. Um, mm -hmm. And so I, in my day job, I take a look at these issues all day, every day, and it depends on how heavily leveraged they were and how far ahead of their money they were in terms of what they owed to the bank versus what they were bringing in. It is a high cash turnover business. And really, I don't think there is one universal answer to this question. Uh, so I think it remains to see how it shakes out. It's going to depend on where the operators are located as to what their opportunities are. Let me also say this. I'm endorsed by every single newspaper around the state that has endorsed in this race because of my qualifications. I'm endorsed by most of the clubs and orgs. I'd say over 95%. And no, the AFL-CFO on a split vote decided to endorse my opponent, but not 240,000 people endorsed him. It was a board decision and it was a split vote. So thank you very much. That's my 60 seconds. That's just 60 seconds. Uh, you know, we just both, the entire world just celebrated Earth Day. I'm just curious. Krista, let's start with you. What did you do on Earth Day? What are your thoughts about Earth Day? 
So I actually attended a virtual town hall for um, the uh, Lake Highlands White Rock Democrats for Earth Day. Um, and we had a great discussion over what we could do. I put out a, um, I put out an editorial that was published in the uh, Fort Worth Star Telegram about what we need to do for our environment and at the Texas Railroad Commission and what the Railroad Commissioner should be doing. And um, I went for a walk. It was such a beautiful <laughs> day on Earth Day. Um, you know, we've had some amazing views and amazing skies since we're not burning a lot of oil and gas right now. Thank you so much. Eliza, Earth Day. What did you do on Earth Day? And um, what do you think yeah, about first, Earth Day? Yeah, first, let me go back to your question about the small producers and the big producers. Uh, the small producer, big producer have gone through this uh, situation before. Uh, I know they've tried to do their best and maintain their uh, uh, pluses and minus and their employers. I know that there's uh, employees. I know there's going to be a lot of uh, employees that have been hurt as a result of it. And I, I will make, I'm, I'm going to, you know, make sure that the, not only do the companies get help, but the uh, uh, employees do as well. And real quick on getting back to the AFL-CIO, the endorsement did not say split decision. The endorsement said, you, you know, uh, one endorsement. There were some people that were split. There were some people that didn't get an endorsement. There were some people that got a co that got a co endorsement. My endorsement is two hundred and forty thousand to to zero. And in addition, I had the support of the Tejano Democrats. I have support of the Mexican American Democrats. This election is going to end, and I have support of PBL, uh, New Era, here, which is an African American group. This election in July 14 is going to be decided by a chunk of Mexican American Hispanic vote, a chunk of uh, African American vote. And, and a whole bunch of other folks. And I'm gonna ask the support of everybody, but I got chunks of vote from different people. All right. Okay. To Earth Day, I, I, I celebrated Earth Day to make sure that we had a great day because I know we're in the middle of this economic situation. Thank you so much. I am going to take a little bit of a break. We have to say hello to our sponsors. We have to let them know how much we appreciate them. And we're gonna take a little bit of a break. I will put up the sponsors so we can personally shake their hands over this virtual town hall and tell them how much we appreciate them. I'll be right back and I'm Esther Davis.
It says on. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Carol Donovan again. And while we're waiting during the break, I want to let you know about the next two town halls that we have coming up this Thursday night. This one be a bonus of our of our series this coming Thursday night, May 7, we will co sponsor a town hall meeting with the group called vote for every Democrat. And the speaker will be Rachel Bittacoffer, who has appeared uh, multiple times as a guest commentator on MSNBC. That's May 7th at 630. And then on May 8th, we will have one of our regular town hall series. This is going to be a very special one because we're going to have the Honorable Leticia Vandepew. I know many of you uh, would remember her uh, because she was our Democratic nominee for Lieutenant Governor. Uh, we are very excited to have her participate and she will be on with Sarah Saldana, who is the former U.S. Attorney for the Northern District of Texas and later served in the Obama administration. Uh, it will be uh, the Rachel Bitkoffer Town Hall will be moderated by State Representative Rafael Anchia, and the uh, uh, and we will uh, be very excited to produce to produce that to you May 7, 6:30, and the second one with Leticia Vandepew and Sarah Saldana on engaging the Latino voter will be on on May 8, 2020, at 4 p.m. Uh, and at this point, uh, I wanted to I wanted to make sure that we all know the sponsors who are sponsoring this town hall series and or town hall meetings. Uh, that includes the series sponsors, Tillotson Law Firm and Carol and Dan Donovan, the meeting sponsors, the Honorable Terry Barker. Dr. Catalina E. Garcia, Hamilton Wingo LLP, and the friendship sponsors, the Honorable Marcy Helfand and Robert Book, as well as Scott Perez LLP. Uh, this series is sponsored by the Dallas County Democratic Party. It was created because we needed to provide a forum for candidates and elected officials that they would not otherwise have during the pandemic. So it's not only important for the candidates and elected officials, but it's important for the local Democrats here in Dallas County. We have found that there has been a hunger for connection uh, because uh, people are social distancing, not able to meet and regularly attend events in their physical forms. And so these town hall meetings have provided also a connection for amongst Democrats in Dallas County. Uh, the uh, prior uh, the prior town halls that we presented the for amongst the first four, we had anywhere from 25 to 50 people attending the zoom meetings. And for the Facebook live stream, there were people watching in the numbers of 100 to 400 people. On top of that, two of the town halls that we've already had have each had over a thousand contacts. Uh, so this is a very popular series. Uh, we already have uh, more than 50 people that are attending this Zoom meeting and we will be counting the Facebook Live uh, statistics as well to let you know that. Uh, we truly appreciate the participation of our Railroad Commission candidates, Krista Casaneda and Roberto Alonzo. Uh, we, we couldn't have these town hall series if the candidates weren't brave enough to step forward and participate with us. All right, and I'm going to at this time, uh, hand it over to the Dallas County Democratic Party political director, Trey Arnold. Hey, okay, thank you so much. 
Uh, what we're going to do is uh, just going to get closing remarks uh, from the two candidates. Uh, we want to start with you, Mr. Roberto, for your closing remarks. I want to thank the Democratic Party for giving us this opportunity to uh, visit with all the folks. Uh, I know uh, for many years uh, we didn't talk about the railroad commissioner, and uh, now we got candidates, and we hope we got a whole bunch of candidates for different positions. To start off with, I would say thank you, Beto. If it wasn't for Beto, who created the idea that we could win here in Texas, that got the National Party to pay attention to us, that now, because of all the work that he did, this is now a battleground state, and I'm so happy for, for, for uh, Texas. Uh, I've been uh, involved with politics for many years. Uh, I started working as a farm worker uh, as a kid, and I went to college and law school, uh, and, and I'm a lawyer. But I know, I know that it's not just being a lawyer, what's important is governing. And having been 20 years in the legislature and two years on the dartboard, I know that we can solve problems by working together. Now, as we come up to the uh, uh, issue of uh, uh, the legislature meeting, there's gonna be a lot of hard decisions, but it's gonna depend on people that think of like mind that take care of the people. Yes, there will be uh, decisions where there's no money, but as I said, there's always money and who gets the money? Through the years, there was a lot of tax breaks of people that were doing good, but I think everybody should share. Now, why am I gonna win? As I keep on pointing out, 240,000 union members endorsed with the organization, and you can ask them and, and back it up, but I know. But the reason they did that is because I have a track record working with the labor unions. I was the national president in the whole country and the whole country of all the state legislators that support unions as it relates to unions and the legislature. Every time an issue came up, every time an issue came up, I asked, where do the unions stand? Where do the unions stand on this issue where there was teacher, where there were firefighters, where there was police, where there was state employees, where there was pensions, where there was, you name it, I was there. And, and, and the, the unions supported me because of that. And in addition, I have the support of the Mexican-American Democrats, the Hano Democrats. A big chunk of the voters is gonna be the Mexican-American. And I'm happy, I'm happy to be a candidate because as, well, as uh, one of the town hall meetings you're gonna do, you're gonna talk about the Latino vote and getting out the Latino vote. Well, I'm your Latino candidate. I'm your Latino candidate. And not only am I the Latino candidate, I've been around the state many, many years. I have friends across the state that know me that are congressmen, state senators, state reps, county commissioners, city council, past and president, that know about my candidacy. We know each other real well. That's why, that's why there's a lot of support around the state. I ask you to support me for railroad commissioner. I got the credentials, I got the background, I got the support, let's win in November. All right, Ms. Krista. Thank you so much. And thank you again, everyone, for participating and for listening. Um, this is a tremendous opportunity that we have for the first time in 25 years to win statewide. It is one of our best opportunities to win statewide. And while I wish every Democrat on the November ballot goes over the top, we have an opportunity here because there is no incumbent. But once we take this seat, we need to be prepared to do the job. We need the deep expertise that I possess and that all of the newspapers have recognized that are really going to help us govern at the Texas Railroad Commission, which is a regulatory body. It is not a legislative body. It is not a, 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 a compromised body in the same way that every other body is around the state. It is something that requires a deep, deep understanding of that which we are regulating, because if we get it wrong, we're all going to suffer. We're suffering now, and we're going to suffer even more with more regulatory missteps. I won the primary election with 34 uh, percent. We had four opponents. I won Dallas County. I won all the major metropolitan areas. I won Travis County and San Antonio, Bear County decisively. Um, I want to focus on the fact that I've been working in Democratic Party politics for 30 years. I have long supported women of being represented equally in public office and so much so that in 2012 when nine men stepped up to run for the newly created Texas Congressional 33rd, I said, I'm going to put my name in there because we've got to at least have a couple of women who are contesting that race. 
As far as Latino votes, the Latinx vote is going to be extremely important now and in the future. And I just want to tell people, I have the name Castaneda for a reason. I have been married to a Latin man for 25 years. I have a Latino son that I have had for 20 years. I am a, a, a part of the Latinx community. I have always been, and I am now. Um, in sum, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time. I am the qualified candidate. I have secured the support of people around the state. I am raising the money. I am going to be competitive and I will win not only in July, but in November, the first elected Democrat statewide in 25 years. Thank you so much for your support. Please support me at KristaForTexas.com and please support me on social media. That's the number one thing you can do. Put a post-it on your, on your computer Hashtag Christopher Texas on all social media and please check in my page every day and help me get the word out. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. And this concludes um, our uh, town hall with the Railroad Commission candidates. We want to thank them again, as well as our sponsors uh, for attending. Uh, we will see uh, you guys back at four for our next town hall. Thank you.